Hello and welcome to the next episode of Career Corner, our one-hour daily program in which we look at one domain of education in depth. We go into the philosophy, the practice, the way it is being taught, the way it is being delivered at this university, Adamus University of Kolkata, and the core skill sets required for that particular domain, the outcome of that particular education in that domain, whether in the industry or in society or in research at every level. We go in depth on that and we have a stalwart every time to focus on that area. This time we look at the world of liberal arts. Liberal arts introduced to you by the Dean of School of Liberal Arts and Cultural Studies, Professor Dr. Mithunjay Chatterjee. Dr. Chatterjee, welcome to our show here. Dr. Chatterjee has been someone who has brought practice and academics together, if we can call it praxis. He had been in the field of communication, media and communication, has worked with some of the best organizations of media and news particularly in this country and more particularly in this state. And he has also worked in academics for a very long time, have been established, uh, have been associated with the establishment of the media school of NSHM which under his stewardship has been, had been one of the top 10 media schools of the country as well. Today, as the Dean of School of Liberal Arts and Cultural Studies in Adamus University, the youngest private sector university which has also been noted as the number one private sector university by three different media organizations in the last two years, he now joins here as the Dean to create a new paradigm of liberal arts, liberal studies education. The erstwhile social science school has been rechristened and would be soon getting into a new vision of liberal arts. Welcome Dr. Uh, Mithunja Chatterjee. Uh, you have espoused the cause of flexible, uh, ap easily applicable and liberal open education. What has been the historical background in the Indian context where liberal arts or liberal approach to education had been practiced and why is it lost? Why did it lose out? If you could give a little historical background to that. See, from time immemorial, uh, studies have always been liberal. Uh, if you go back to the dawn of civilization, you will see that uh, there were primarily four or five people, uh, categories of people one would go to the king's court uh, to become a strategist. Someone would go for warfare. The third would go for agriculture. The fourth would be uh, a, a laborer on the field. And the fifth uh, would just do nothing. Rather, the parents of this uh, people were very confused that their words were drawing or etching paintings in the wall, cave walls and uh, they were very kind of disappointed with their words. As civilization has gone from one stage to another, uh, the kings have all gone, the, uh, the warfares have been lost or won. But if you still go back, you find the, the basic history. Before history was basically documented, only on the walls and through the etchings or paintings of that time. So liberal arts has basically survived uh, ages, in fact. And uh, if you go back, the, the concept of education basically came from liberal thinking. The Greeks uh, were, were the exponents in this field and the Indians were perhaps uh, one of the most uh, evident uh, practitioners of liberal arts. If you go into the history, you will see the king's son or the nobleman's son went to Gurukuls and they learned a 360 degree learning of warfare, of civic life, of, uh, of norms of society, of uh, economy, of uh, grammar, of, of astronomy. And uh, uh, and it was all kind of uh, through the words of the gurus. 
in gurukuls they used to live there and they were always given the liberty to think on their own and kind of find solutions when they were in ground zero, on ground zero doing something or manifesting that knowledge the ancient universities of india nalanda and takshashila if you go back to that kind of an era you'll see that all the people from all over the world flock to this uh, universities to learn grammar astronomy and uh, uh, the nalanda's famous people where the father of indian grammar panini oh, and and chandragupta maurya the founder of the maurya down dynasty and uh, scholars of south east asia from china from japan and other places you will always find that they were from the nalanda university so liberal arts is not new but what happened to liberal arts education as the invaders came and invaded india the the basic concept of liberal arts changed from their basic needs and particularly uh, this goes back to the british rule because the britishers found that they did not want uh, people who were who would be thinkers who would be global leaders right. for that they had cambridge and oxford right. they wanted just people to work on yes, their they wanted mind roles they wanted clerks, clerks. they went wanted very narrowly focused engineers as we call babudam they the, just wanted babus the babus so they wanted people to fit in their zigso puzzle right. if for thinkers for liberal arts education they had cambridge they had oxford so they they basically did not want or they were against the indians to be liberal thinkers and leaders of the world so that is the history of liberal arts uh, education why do you think it did not get a push after the independence uh, uh, because it was the indian leaders who came to power in 1947 and uh, what were the strong strong points and the weak points with respect to liberal education uh, in indian education since 1947 see the basic thing is the early early thinkers or the early leaders wanted this country to uh, industrialize and for that need they wanted people to either specialize in uh, engineering in technology or in management or in economics or or things that would make them uh, uh, supply uh, people to work for the frontiers of the country right so the priority of the nation was industrialization and economic growth immediately, immediately. and growth in terms of figures and ter- in in money money uh, in numbers rather than actually focusing on the philosophy of education is that the point exactly the point and basically uh, there were uh, not many schools not many colleges even right. in the 1950s there were around 500 uh, colleges and university in india so uh, bas- basically what happened is that people and 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 as soon as the people started getting educated in india the the they wanted uh, their sons and daughters to go into stem education because stem education gave uh, the uh, the scope for specialization and once they specialized they got into jobs the iits came up and the iims came up and people Uh, made a bee line even today when you have got premier universities in india who have got a cut mark of 99% okay. so people thought that getting into stem education or or management education give them ready made jobs for the sake of the viewers stem is referring to science technology engineering and mathematics stem and uh, my question to uh, professor chatterjee is does stem education also have scope of liberal education absolutely because liberal education is uh, <coughs> like the field of media liberal education encompasses all right so if you want to be in media you can come from economics or you can come from uh, biology or you can come from uh, microbiology it doesn't really matter because it, it you need not be only a liberal studies person to come into engineer, into me, media that's a basic thing is liberal arts accepts everybody because a person to become rounded and a person to become wanted and in the changing economy would be a person who is 360 degree 
uh, learned person with all rounded kind of education because if we go back to just before building the howrah bridge here that is a landmark in kolkata the engineers came from uh, england but they needed someone to go and talk to the people who had to be removed from that area see th this this gives an un unique example because the engineers were not in a position and they could really understand that they could not talk or convince the local people to ev ev evict that place so that the bridge could be built so here is the gap that you are a technocrat fine but then you have to make a proposal for your dream project how do you write a proposal that is something that you 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 are taught how do you converse that is a subject so how that do you bring taught. how do you bring your technical expertise in the socio political economic milieu of the country so that it's acceptable to a larger audience and it goes closer to the human heart i do understand that the engineering also requires beyond mechan mechanical aspects aspects of social realities to be understood economic and political realities to be understood so uh, in effect liberal arts is it in conflict with specialization or is it a base for specialization how do you correlate liberal education with specialized domain specialist education let us let us go to a uh, to an aspect and talk about something that we are really ashamed of 150 spots of the uh, ranking of premier universities of this world does not have one single indian university why why are the us universities always uh, ranked as the first to 20 or first to 50 and and some of the european universities because they were the pioneer to move in the field do liberal arts education basic thing is i'll give you a small example of my school which is in raurkela and i went back after i became a principal of a college to talk back to go, to go back and talk to my my fellow schoolmates i told them about uh, media about about liberal arts and other kind of uh, subjects and uh, they were so enthralled they were very uh, enthused they went back and told their parents uh, we we don't want to become engineers or doctors only we can also study media we can also study liberal arts subjects the next day i i remember very angry group of parents ghiraud my hotel and give me a ultimatum that you leave raurkela just now by the next train otherwise we we'll, you'll get a uh, you'll have a face a bad time because people have gone back because they they were in people uh, in 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 uh, raurkela people always thought their students that their their sons or daughters would either uh, become engineers and work in raurkela steel plant or they would uh, study medicine in burla medical college go to uh, ispat general hospital or other hospitals of of the region if not they would rather go into chartered accountancy cost accountancy do a bba or mba but not any other subject because for the common man it is still a taboo they think that if my student is doing arts well iska kuch nahi hone wala <laughs> that is the basic thing why we we have rather a uh, a uh, 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 say a uh, you um, uh, we don't have universities basically where who where liberal arts is uh, encouraged till ashoka came in just 6 years ago and it has created a history and uh, there are premier other two three universities like symbiosis and flame and uh, jindal who are basically have introduced liberal arts and they are doing fairly well great so you are actually looking at uh, uh, the new era of liberal education evolving in this country with a few institutes how do these institutes stand out in comparison to those who are not following a liberal education pattern what one or two three key points are there for liberal education see i'll tell you uh, <coughs> very frankly today uh, in the post covid world uh, basically or in the changing economy of the 21st century we we can understand that when uh, 
take a generation of our fathers or their fathers they used to uh, learn one thing get into a job and for the next 40 years practice the same thing and retire uh, very uh, happily but today the world is changing one professional will change at least five different kind of specialization during his his job uh, life so where does he learn and how does he learn so when say the uh, the the skill life of a skill or a specialization in tomorrow's world would just be four to five years a technology which is today so relevant we, even two years back we did not know about that technology it is changing so fast we did not know we were so very a uh, kind of agog with enthusiasm with just dth and digital television right exactly tomorrow uh, it would be something else the the good thing and the bad thing about today is that tomorrow we really don't know what job will come in and what specialization will it require let's go back to 1975 when uh, uh, say kodak uh, a technician in kodak in the r d department was the first to come up with digital films but kodak was so kind of prevalent in the world with with its film that they kept it under the carpet today kodak, kodak is history because Koda, if Kodak would have thought ahead of times at that time and basically come up with the digital technology of films, then Kodak today would have been relevant. So the basic thing is you have to be relevant to basically practice your skill. You have to be relevant for your employer to be productive. These are the two factors. Now one is your skill, the other is your ability to be productive. Now, this skill is taught in, in the technological college or in the management college. But your adaptability, people skills, your uh, basic ability to convince your employer that even if the skill has become redundant, I am still relevant because I have got other skills of man management, being leadership skills, being your ability to speak, your communication, your civic ideas, your um, people management, so that in the time of that six months that you acquire the new skill, you still become relevant and you again retain your job. Otherwise, what will happen is you will become redundant with the redundancy of the skill and if you do not have the liberal arts kind of abilities to really tide over the time till you are, are abreast with the new skill, you will lose your job and your livelihood. Great. In the current times post-COVID, <coughs> this is very relevant. This is very relevant because several of the skills which were known to be path-breaking skills during pre-COVID era, in the post-COVID era, many of them would lose their steam. And we will be moving first to digital, which is now the case, and maybe gradually to a digital world where physical and the digital converge. And in that context, certain skills which were very relevant at a pure physical world might be irrelevant in the digital world. And therefore, this adaptability to newer skills, picking up ability of newer skills, problem solving attitude, creative thinking attitude, bringing in innovation, and as you rightly said, man management and civic ideation. These are various other things, conflict management. These are various other skill sets which would be required in the post-COVID 21st century. A great uh, beginning to the entire domain that you have brought in. Now, in comparison to, if you can, if you can identify in bullet points, a, a, st a student, a learner, let me rather say learner because students learn in the classroom, learners learn inside and beyond the classroom. Students learn from teachers, learners do take help of uh, the mentors, but they learn from their peers, they learn from the environment, they learn from internet, they learn from books and, from, and learn by doing it. Students learn from marks and degrees and learners learn for lifetime skill set, lifetime uh, way of conducting life rather. So undoubtedly, today we are entering into a world which is not of teachers and students, but of mentors and learners. So if a learner is groomed in liberal education perspective, 
and if a learner is groomed with a specialized one specific domain perspective how does the previous guy who is trained in liberal education stand out what are the three or four points would you like to attribute character wise and uh, skill wise and attitude wise what are the attributes would you give them uh, let me first tell you that today we are in a world which has an answer space someone asks you a question you have already learnt it so you answer it well we have to traverse the distance to go into a space which is a question world very good very from nice. from what to how you you see you go to any examination today there are mcqs and there are question what do you think of what is the answer of the moment you change that what or how to why you lose 99% of your students because they have not thought of the why mm. they have not learned the why Very the nice. teachers have never ever learned given them a lesson of why that is the basic thing is that liberal arts exposes you to critical thinking to asking questions nice. to learning the world literature right. to analyze writings of the world to think differently out of the box because you have you respect a lot of viewpoints it doesn't matter that life lessons cannot be contained in textual books textual books only gives you something which has been tried tested and and then solved of the, of the covid world there are so many speculation today so many perspective today in the entire world about covid the moment we get a kind of vaccine for the virus that is the end textual books will contain how the virus was contained by a vaccine your innovations is what will create that vaccine but you need those kind of innovators otherwise every lab could have created the vaccine why is that that someone is standing out in oxford or some company is standing out in in some part of the world who are thinking differently right. that is exactly why liberal <coughs> arts education is today almost a fodder it is just a necessity it is no more the luxury of the rich because right. in the words of many scholars of indian origin they they repent that one omurto shen talks about liberal arts and talks about world thinking talks about global leadership from another foreign university where are our thinkers right where are our global leaders we have great politicians we have great people who are say exceptions to the rule but where is a university today that stands out and say we have innovated and we have created leaders who have led the world that's where liberal arts is so necessary today great <clears throat> thank you and that gives a perspective particularly i appreciate this answer space to question space because answers people are only seeking answers as a part of education but education actually needs to teach or rather mentor youngsters to ask questions the ability to ask questions is an ability that comes through liberal approach to education no doubt about that i also am finding a very interesting differentiator here a mechanic is a skilled power a human resource who looks at how to do an engineer along with how to do why does it happen the reason behind the the scientific reason and a liberal educated engineer would actually get into why is it necessary why it can be useful to the society or how it will be relevant to That's the, the point. to the next part of next why, part why of is it century. useful means how it is relevant to the society and the next part of the growth that you said and how it can be innovated maybe it can be innovated to have a lower cost with the same outcome or a higher outcome with the same cost so this approach comes from a liberal educated person very well said and you have given that context 
it is the important skill for 21st century for 20th century the focus was on stem skills on specialized skills do you think that specialization has lost its steam today and why liberal education is the need for the 21st century let us kind of for this answer let us bifurcate a job per se and a career per se see the concept has changed my father joined a company he worked there for 40 years and then he was very happy to retire he did the same thing today every single day he got promoted because he became experienced he got promoted uh, more because he acquired some people skills he could manage some people and that is exactly how things uh, really worked uh, since independence to today but if you have to build a career in the 21st century remember the period between the loss of your specialization or non relevance of your specialization to you becoming relevant by acquiring another specialization you would be a period where you will not have your job or li livelihood this is where you would be so uh, kind of necessary vulnerable okay. vulnerable okay. and to to tide over this vulnerability you have to be so forth uh, let me just go back to uh, a, a kind of uh, you know a story that john t rhodes once once told me you know we were we were chatting and john t was uh, here in kolkata for ipl and we were uh, chatting in uh, one of the uh, five star hotels when john t told me you know when i was in school i used to get dropped every every time because i was not the best batsman then i realized i was also not the best bowler so how do i retain my position i was thinking about it when one of my sports teacher told me uh, you know jonty people look for specialists but people would also like utility please viewers please mark this word jonty kunt uh, kunt uh, you know uh, ponder what what is that utility factor that will make me inevitable in the team and he found one that was fielding neither being the best batsman neither being the best bowler jonty rhodes never got dropped in his in his career because he was an utility guy remember right. a liberal arts guy is basically that utility guy with one specialization will be everywhere he would It's be not... needed So just just for an example a person who has lost his uh, specialization because it has become redundant would survive because he is a great communicator he would survive because he is a great team man he would survive because he is a great leader he would survive because he can add to r&d the he could he would survive because he thinks out of the box he would survive because everyone likes him because his people skills are very very good very nice. and this six months will give him time to learn the next specialization and carry on so nice. absolutely appreciate easy. appreciate indeed uh, eknath solkar similar example eknath solkar hmm. uh, i i went to uh, meet mr donald bradman it in his home in uh, in adelaide he was 82 year old and he was still uh, fixing those uh, tiles Uh, on the roof and, and 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 he thought well this is something i know beyond cricket right he said so why not do it why not do it why right. should i uh, hire someone else right so he, uh, now to bring this liberal education this is an approach what you are saying is a question of approach and outlook an outlook towards education outlook towards skill development outlook outlook towards human resource nurturing now to bring to your school Uh, the school of liberal arts and cultural studies i understand it's a rechristened one and the concept has to be completely uh, brought in in future but what are the current departments what are their focus areas and uh, what sort of uh, changes from liberal education perspective you intend to bring in the short run at least or short to middle run see we we have a continuing school called school of social sciences right. we have bengali we have english we have history we have pol science and sociology we have got undergraduate postgraduate we uh, basically also have phd so uh, these are continuing courses which we would not disturb but we would introduce 
those kind of elements like a person who is studying Bengali also learns computers. A person who is studying Bengali also learns communication. A person who is basically studying Bengali or English also learns to play the violin or the piano which he or she likes. So tomorrow it would be a world where there would be no BSc, no BA or no MA or MSc or whatever. There would be a bouquet of subjects. So you specialize, you want a specialization in microbiology? Fine, but you go to a class where Plato and his thought process is, is taught because <laughs> you are innovating. Right. So the physics, the microbiology and play thoughts of Plato with maybe Panini's Ashtadhyaya, which is the grammar or say Copernicus's uh, idea of astro astronomy would be so relevant to one single person that he never loses his evocation, he never loses his livelihood and also cherishes because a no, happy, I, that you know, the happy soul always learns it better. Yes, right. That, that point is well made. My only perspective is that um, coming to your school, School yeah. of Liberal Arts, what these five departments that you've said, uh, sociology, political science, including international relations, and uh, English literature, Bengali literature, language and literature both, and then yes. history. How would you bring in a liberal education or liberal arts perspective? What sort of exact changes would you bring in? Exactly See, uh, in the sense, at least the few two, three points. Basic thing is, we are introducing in the university the majors and the minors. Right. Which will positively give people to choose subject beyond the straight jacketed. So an engineering student can select something in English literature yes, yes. or sociology, something right. Okay. And, and then I, I would like to bring in subjects like uh, psychology. I would bring in subjects like uh, basic sciences, performing arts. We'll bring in subjects of basic business and economics. And we will be a, we will try to be a center of excellence and a crucible for the entire university so that our resources can be shared, we can add value, we can work with every single school in the university to add value and our students and their students can exchange their uh, classes and learn and become world citizens of tomorrow. Great. Uh, the scope of research, I understand from what you have said, liberal arts looks at, the domain of liberal arts looks at uh, interdisciplinary research, research into innovations. So what is the scope of research you see and uh, what would you be able to bring in the research element or research domain of liberal arts in Adamas University? Liberal arts is based on research. Is based on research in human relationship, based on research in interdisciplinary subjects, based on research of new thinking, based of research, uh, based on research of critical thinking, based on innovation, incubation, and and it carries on. So, uh, research would primarily be one of the most integral part of the school, and. Not only that, we would also be one of the uh, the kind of epicenter of research in the of the uni. The research is going on in different schools of the university by adding, say, data, by adding different thoughts and ideas, by adding uh, the out of the box uh, thinking and things like that. So we would positively be in a position uh, to create this. School. It will take some time because it can't overnight graduate into something uh, like that. It will take some time, but with time, this school has a prospect. And because in the eastern and northeastern region, there is not even a single university or, 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 or institution which has got this liberal arts as one of the specialization. Or even an approach as well. Yeah. And a center of excellence. This it will be a pioneer in this field, in this part of the country. Undoubtedly, Flame University in, um, in, Western in Pune India. or Symbiosis in Pune or Ashoka University in Delhi. Uh, they have evolved, APJ University in Delhi, Shivnadar University. They have evolved largely on the liberal arts approach, liberal education approach rather. Uh, 
I uh, do appreciate that you have a cut job cut for you much bigger and and a lot of a visionary job in that sense and to bring in a lot of uh, inputs so if i have to ask you in the next 3 months what are the first three or four things you would focus on when you take over as when you have just now taken over as the dean of the school what are the first three or four or five things you would be looking see into? the first thing i will stress on knowledge tools i and my team will positively uh, go and visit the best centers of liberal arts try to learn and try to imbibe try to see at the syllabuses try, uh, try to really uh, talk to the people uh, how they render their subject what are the basic techniques of the subject how students react to uh, such kind of a teaching this is a very big phase that we have the first 6 uh, 3 to 6 months where we need to learn a lot we also would look at different schools abroad there is a uh, university since 2002 or 2004 uh, in our neighboring bangladesh called the university of liberal arts we would like to visit that university would like to uh, correlate co and co work with that university to uh, make this center of excellence happen we'll also have a tough time manage uh, basically convincing the management of of the university which is technology uh, uh, oriented to have that kind of a latitude given to a school or a group of schools because media can also be a school which can have a big latitude economics can have today business can have today uh, even engineering students today need a lot of latitude and innovative thinking and uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, teaching in liberal arts and liberal ideas and studies because tomorrow that is the professional that the world is looking at not the run of the mill anybody can do that you know the run of the mill jobs will be done by robots the people that they would need are people who are thinkers people who are innovators people who can uh, upgrade themselves or they can adapt to different circumstances and challenges because that's they need people who are not part of the problem they need people who are Great. part of the solution that's a good way of telling now we do not need people who just talks about problems who are part of the problem who comes with, yes there could be a problem that there there has to be a mind that finds couple of solutions to solve that problem there could be lateral thinking to look at multiple solutions and then a vertical thinking to focus on one and when you select one and focus on that then it has to be a vertical focused approach to execute it Undoubtedly, that's a very good overview that you've given. One point that I'd like to ask is, um, what would be the impact on jobs and career prospects? Both jobs and career. I understand you made a very good difference between job is what you do at the moment, career is what you have for a lifetime, and sometimes this could it need not be a lifetime. There could be multiple careers in a lifetime, as you rightly said. Middle age, uh, sometimes there is a shift of career. Uh, we have seen many engineers becoming chefs, chefs are becoming uh, entrepreneurs of a different type. have gone and started uh, farming people have started farming so what would you look at as an impact on jobs and careers from liberal education and liberal arts see first of all uh, people from liberal arts can have their own startups that is one of the big sectors they can look at ngos very big sector that they get employed there are people pr agencies there are uh, corporate communication agencies there are big uh, corporates which are looking at such kind of people to find solution to many of their problems because today leadership will never be top down today leadership is collaborative so that they would always look at such kind of qual qualities they would get a lot of uh, engagements i don't think uh, jobs would be very important in tomorrow's world there would be multiple engagements but of one single person needing multiple skills at one time because uh, that when you go to the west you see this person working uh, morning shift in one company then also doing the evening shifts we will positively look at such a economy where there would be plentiful opportunities for people with such kind of qualities and specialization which gives them the multiple opportunities at the same time to be relevant and to be fruitful and also earn a good living so there are multiple sectors that are going to open up education will be one of the biggest sectors 
uh, uh, research would be one of the biggest sector. Innovation and incubation would need people from this uh, area. Uh, people would uh, need area, uh, these uh, people uh, in many fairness. I, I think the whole world uh, uh, is, is a scope for people with liberal arts. Uh, yes, the scope could be quite large, but when you when you actually apply in specific contexts, so uh, what are the three broad domains you look at? Where uh, three years down the line, four years down the line, your pass out with a new vision would find a welcoming hands, welcoming arms there. Uh, to be very sure, uh, to be very very, uh, you know, if you want a very brusque answer, in three years, the good news and the bad news is neither you nor i know what will it look like what opportunities will it bring what kind of specialization will it need what kind of skills would be pertinent because only two years ago we were very happy to uh, have a technology which is redundant today so with the good news and the bad news is we really don't know because tomorrow three years down the line the whole world could be a different place to live in so only things that would survive and get you tied over such kind of situation would be your latent quality of your thinking, your innovation, your thought process, your liberal arts qualities, your people skills, your people, uh, your, your uh, civic identity uh, in, in, in the society and so on. So I think uh, if you want me to categorize industries, uh, I think the whole concept is going to change for the people who would graduate in three years or five years. So making kind of uh, predictions now, making kind of definitive answers now is a very difficult domain today because today uh, is a world which is all innovative. Uh, Uber does not own a single uh, cab right. but is the biggest cab company in the world. So uh, the the uh, hotel uh, companies like uh, I uh, they don't even have one single room. Oyo don't even have a single room. So they are the greatest people booking your uh, your travel all over the world. So there are certain kind of economies that will absolutely face a lot of problems like the service industry. It is going to post-COVID world. We'll see a very, very uh, churning in those kind of sectors. Education has really seen a lot of transition, if not churning, because tomorrow uh, a, an online class will be a reality, not something that someone wishes to do. So everything is going to change. So making very definitive uh, predictions today is a foolish job. Great. That there is a big message here in the last point that you said, uh, Professor Dr. Mitunjay Chatterjee, the Dean of School of Liberal Arts and Cultural Studies, has made a pertinent point towards the close of his talk, which focuses on the complete redundancy of things, even till recently were important, and complete uncertainty that we are entering, entering into. Many people have called it a VUCA world, which is marked by volatility, which he has talked about, uncertainty that he has talked about. This is this VUCA world is also extremely agile. And this agility requires nimble fitted, nimble fitted human resources who can adapt and are flexible, who are liberal and yet technically skilled, who are generalists and yet specialists, who are societally active and technologically also efficient, sound. sound. This is the world that you are moving into. At one point of time, in my understanding of uh, education, particularly in the context of communication and media, I, have, I had used the word convergence, not just in terms of technological convergence, but also convergence of technology with marketing and reaching out to the people, outreach with the creative skills, where you talk about writing, uh, framing, and uh, you know the concepts and all that. So ideation, putting technology to fulfill that idea and taking that idea to the world and changing, uh, making that more relevant and innovating that idea. All the three would need it to be together for a genuinely liberal educated, open-minded, but skillfully sound 
skilled wise also so skilled wise also sound so we look forward to a completely new generation of human resources and talent who are liberal educated liberally educated who are open and flexible who are adaptable who are technologically sound as well and also has great soft skills and life skills i know it's a tall order but the leaders are all is few in number and such leaders have to be great team workers and also when necessary lead from the front with innovation that was dr professor mrityunjay chatterjee for you who brought into our perspectives the detailing the historical background the evolution the setbacks and the reemergence of liberal education liberal arts a liberal approach to education in today's world thank you very much professor chatterjee for a very detailed one hour long uh, exposure or exposition or if i could say a uh, discourse on liberal education which shall be the hallmark of both stem and humanities education in times to come thank you and thank with you. that we bring this session of career corner to an end thank you very much thank you. Biosciences and technological developments based on biology including entrepreneurship in this sector are on the rise in India. We are home to many developments in all forms of biotechnological products with applications in food, nutrition, healthcare, packaging etc. The unique BTech and BSc programs in Adama School of Biosciences and Biotechnology are path breaking academic innovation in this sector. Welcome to the world of biotechnology. a top class hands on engineering and technology education with high emphasis on soft skills of emotional intelligence artificial intelligence learning the adama school of engineering and technology is a trail blazing institute it integrates learning in the classroom with the laboratory workshops and the factories or the corporate offices it is also associated with several universities in the world With a 2% share of the India's GDP, the media industry is growing faster than India's GDP. And with the world's largest number of films and television channels, it is the national informer and entertainer. With more than 1000 films a year, cinema is a soft power. News, entertainment, brand communication, we lead Asia in all. And a multi-skilled multimedia talent is being trained in the Arama School of Media and Communication. Education today is changing the traditional chalk and dot method into new age experiential learning. New techniques like flipped classroom, case study method and increasingly higher component of learning by doing are changing the game. Also, evaluation processes are evolving from just semester end exam to continuous evaluation. Jury judge practical work, life projects and what not. Arama School of Education prepares these new age teachers for schools and colleges of india it is important to be on the right side of the law and even more important to ensure justice for all the arama school of law and justice firmly believes in this dictum with moot courts national and international seminars debates and initiatives of various type the law school offers integrated courses with bba bcom and ba as well with different focus areas With the 24-hour work culture, Arama School of Management prepares professionals for marketing, human resources, finance, supply chain management, and pharmaceutical management for the new Indian economy, targeting five trillion dollars annually. Close association with several top corporate houses and intellectual talent in the classroom, the school is proud to have one of the highest placement records in East and the Northeast India. Global society of nearly 8 billion people with 1.3 billion in India is going through a churn. Be it politics, economics, history, society, international relations or in the literary expressions. There are major movements, growth initiatives, new literary trends and the social issues rising in various parts of the world. Hence, the need to have an in-depth, perceptive education of liberal arts which encompasses all of these. Welcome to the Adamas University. School of Social Sciences.
Want a good job in a big city after college? Then don't skip this ad. For a great professional future, you need college education with hands-on training, smartness and a network of talented friends. And you'll get it all at Adamus University. Professors at Adamus share their expert knowledge with students and also equip them with industry skills. Register now for Adamus University admission test and take the leap into a bright future.